Okay, this is part two of the unit four class worksheet. We're still on number six, and these are the parts questions. So this is C and D, and both of them are um, parts per million, and this is parts per billion. So question C says, based on the maximum level of chlorine detected in Cleveland water, how many milligrams of chlorine are present in one liter of drinking water. Now the maximum level you can find right here. That's 2.4 units are parts per million. So the maximum level is 2.4 ppm. So we need to use that in our formula to figure out how many milligrams are present in one liter of water. One liter is 1,000 milliliters. So we put this in our formula, 2.4 equals grams of chlorine over 1,000 milliliters times 10 to the 6th, okay? We're looking for this number, how many grams of chlorine are present in 1,000 milliliters given a concentration of 2.4 ppm. <clears throat> So when I do some algebra here, divide by 10 to the 6 and multiply by um, multiply by 1,000, or excuse me, by just multiplying by 1,000 on the left-hand side, I get 2,400, and that equals grams of Cl2 times 10 to the 6. By dividing by 10 to the 6 on both sides, I get 0 0.0. 024 grams of chlorine <clears throat> and then I just need to convert this into milligrams and I get 2.4 milligrams so that's how much chlorine is present in one liter of water based on this concentration all right Let's look at chromium. How much chromium is present based on the maximum level? 0.247. You notice how the units have changed? Parts per billion. One liter is a thousand milliliters, just like before. So let's see if we can do this one. Very similar to the last problem. Just going to change one number, well, a couple numbers. 0.247 is equal to grams of chromium in a thousand milliliters and I'm going to multiply this times 10 to the ninth because it's parts per billion okay and when I do this I'm going to multiply by a thousand over here I get 247 is equal to grams of chromium times 10 to the ninth. Then I'm going to divide both sides by 10 to the ninth, and I get 2.47 times 10 to the negative 7 grams of chromium. And then I need to convert this to micrograms. 1 gram is 1 times 10 to the 6th micrograms and the answer is 0.247 micrograms of chromium oops now these just happen to be the same here and here that's just because the units that I chose happen to work out that way it won't necessarily always be that. So keep that in mind when you're solving these. Okay, milliequivalents. All right, got four different types of milliequivalent questions here. I tried to give you a variety of questions, not just the same type. First one is the simplest. How many milliequivalents of sodium are present in 250 milligrams of sodium phosphate? 
If you remember from the steps that we do to convert milligrams into milliequivalents, the first step is to divide by the molar mass. I'm going to give you the molar mass here. The molar mass is 163.94 milligrams per millimole. Okay, so I take 250 milligrams sodium phosphate divide by 163.94 milligrams per millimole and the answer comes out to be 1.54 millimoles of Na3PO4. Next step is to convert into millimoles of Na. For every one millimole of Na3PO4, there are three millimoles of Na+. That's because this subscript is three. There are three of these in every one compound. And that's going to give me 4.57 millimoles of Na+. Whoops, Na+. Next step is to multiply by the charge. That's just one, one plus for sodium. So the answer is 4.57 milliequivalents. I should add this, milliequivalents of sodium plus. Okay. Next question is kind of working backwards. A doctor orders four milliequivalents of magnesium to be given. You have solid magnesium chloride on hand. How many milligrams of magnesium chloride do you give to the patient? So we're pretty much working exactly backwards. So we need to work the steps backwards. Since we have four milliequivalents, we need to first divide by the charge. And the charge is two plus four, whoop, charge is two plus four magnesium. So I'm going to divide by the charge of 2, which will give me 2 millimoles of magnesium 2 plus. Next step is to figure out how many millimoles of magnesium chloride I have. So in every compound of magnesium chloride, there's one magnesium. So there's one millimole of magnesium in every millimole of magnesium chloride. Okay, then the final step is going to be to multiply by the molar mass. One millimole of magnesium chloride is equal to 95.21 milligrams of magnesium chloride. And when I do all that multiplication, I end up with 190.4 milligrams of magnesium chloride. So this is how much would be administered based on the dosage for milliequivalents. All right. <clears throat> this next, the next two actually involve concentrations. This one's asking how many milliequivalents per milliliter of potassium are present in an IV bag containing two grams potassium chloride. Step one would be to convert grams into milligrams of potassium chloride. And that's 2,000 milligrams of potassium chloride. Once we're in milligrams, we can divide by the molar mass of potassium chloride, which I will give you. 74.55 milligrams per millimole. I'm going to divide by the molar mass. And that will get me uh, millimoles of potassium chloride, 26.83.
and I convert millimoles of potassium chloride to millimoles of potassium. Since there is only one potassium in every one potassium chloride, uh, so one to one, and then I'm going to multiply by the charge, which is one. So the answer is going to be the same. 26.83 milliequivalents of potassium <clears throat> in two grams of potassium chloride. But I'm asked to figure out how, what was the concentration. So I need to take this number, 26.83, and divide it by 1,000 milliliters to get the final concentration, which is going to be 0 0.0. 27 milliequivalents per milliliter of potassium. All right, let's do a similar problem, except we're working backwards from the last one. How many milligrams of sodium chloride are needed to prepare an IV bag? That is 100 milliequivalents per liter of chloride. All right. It's 100 milliequivalents per liter, and we need to prepare one liter. We're going to multiply by one liter, okay, to get rid of liters. So we need 100 milliequivalents of chloride. Now we need to work backwards, just like we did before. We're going to divide by the charge, which is one. And that's going to give us 100 millimoles of chloride. And then we're just going to work our way backwards here. One millimole of chloride in every one millimole of sodium chloride. And for every one millimole of sodium chloride, there is 58. 0.44 milligrams. So if I do all of this, I'm going to end up with 58, 44 milligrams of sodium chloride. So this is how much sodium chloride I would need in order to ensure a concentration of 100 milliequivalents per liter. So I take this and I would dissolve it into one liter and that will give me this concentration. All right, I'm going to go ahead and stop the video for part two, and we'll do another one for the last page.